Gentlemen, so we'll be looking at uh, budgets here, and this is just to complement what we'll go through in class. So a budget is an essential uh, way uh, for people to meet their savings aspirations, to meet their savings goals. And the gist of, of budgeting is really uh, looking into how you're spending your money, uh, prioritizing where you're spending your money, and hopefully, after you've spent your money on what you want and need, you've got uh, money left over, which you can use towards achieving a financial goal or for savings. So budgeting is how we manage our personal income and expenditure um, to achieve financial goals, uh, which, of course, savings is one of those. So people um, will budget to achieve uh, the likes of saving up for a house, um, to save up for a car, purchasing a car or a holiday, or they might be uh, setting a budget and sticking to it to meet existing financial obligations. So existing financial obligations uh, might be um, an expensive lifestyle, uh, which could relate to uh, the dependents in your life, whether it be uh, children or, or a spouse or parents, um, or it could be a uh, financial obligation uh, to a lender, to the likes of a bank, where you might have to uh, repay a mortgage, or it could be a financial obligation to the government if it's a, if it's a student loan. So budgets must uh, be realistic. It would be very silly to put effort into creating a plan of your income and expenditure, uh, but the details were not actually relevant to how you uh, spend your money and how you want to spend your money. So it must be, um, it's essential that that the saver or the budgeter uh, must be honest with themselves and realistic. So a budget, let's have a look at what they look like. So here's a template of a monthly budget. So some key features of budgets, gentlemen, is that they need to be related to a time period um, obviously, uh, a monthly budget is going to cover monthly income and monthly expenses. So without a time period, a uh, budget can uh, lose context. So budget's going to have to record uh, the income that the budgeter or the individual or the household uh, will receive. And as we uh, reflect on the different types of income that people receive, this might be income from labor, from work, so it could be their wages, uh, salary, expected commissions. Uh, it could be income from owning assets, such as uh, rent or dividends. Um, or alternatively, it could be income transferred from others. So it might be a welfare payment, if we're um, taking this from the perspective of a retiree. So a retiree, people the age over the age of 65, 65 and older, receive a government superannuation or a pension. Okay, so the income's the fun part, of course, and the tough part is having a look at your expenses. But before we go down there, we'll have a look at goals. So it's essential that our budget is linked to a goal. And the goal um, could be one of the ones that we mentioned on the previous slide, like meeting a financial obligation, such as a mortgage, or it might be saving up towards uh, purchasing a high value item. So income minus the expenses that go out the door are gonna help achieve our goal. So expenses, um, so this is how we're using our income and what the income dollars are going towards. Now it's important ideally to um, have savings as one of your expenses. So this is an amount of your income that you're not going to spend, but you're ring fencing it. You're essentially putting it aside um, to be um, protected um, as savings. So you don't want to spend this money that you've that you're ideally budgeting as savings. We have housing costs, so you want to be very realistic as, as to the expenses that you have in your lives. Housing could be rent or uh, mortgage, or alternatively, 
It might be your maintenance costs. Transportation, this is going to be your bus fees. Um, maybe your train tickets, could be your petrol costs, could be um, maybe insurance relating to your vehicles. But we offer, most of us have to uh, travel on a daily basis and it's necessary that we account for those expenses. Utilities, electricity, water, um, gas and the likes. These are the things that uh, we consume on a regular basis to help us meet our needs and wants. Debts, yeah, we covered credit recently and the types of debts that people have. So it's important to um, not meet these financial obligations because we know that lenders can uh, take action against uh, borrowers who don't meet their financial obligations. So this little section here will be, be about paying back the loan value, so repaying your loan, as well as paying interest to the lender, and that's um, for your use of the money. So it could be a student loan here, your higher purchase agreements, your mortgage, um, asset finance, any, any debt that you have, you want to be definitely including it in your budget because we, we know that um, not accounting for these, you'll find yourself in a tough position or bankrupt. Finally, so personal expenses. These expenses are ones that are going to be a bit more discretionary. Now, discretionary means that they're more wants as opposed to needs. You can see those first four categories are almost musts from housing to debt. But personal, this is where we're getting into the likes of entertainment, uh, perhaps buying um, new clothes, new uh, electronics. Um, maybe it's going to be some of your food costs, which of course are less discretionary. So that's uh, definitely essential. But what types of food costs? Is it a supermarket shop versus is it a restaurant shop? So... Once we have all the different types of ways that we want to spend our money, uh, ways that, that we want to spend our money or save our money, we need to put the budgeted figure, so what we're aiming to spend on these, these values. Of course, what we're budgeting to save plus consume or spend, that should be less than our income or else uh, we're not going to meet our savings target up top in reality. If these budgeted amounts um, are going to exceed our income. That said, uh, we should also be tracking our actual expenditures. So even though we might aim to spend a certain amount on transportation, we might find that we have to spend a little bit more uh, because in reality, things didn't go as we planned. So maybe we aim to take a bus one day, but the bus service was uh, late or, or um, was not running so we had to take an uber and an uber is going to be more expensive than the bus so um, in reality our transportation costs are higher so we should keep track of actually what our costs are um, so that in the future we might have we um, might need to update our budget to reflect what's actually happening in our lives we might budget to spend $100 a month on electricity, but if we find that we're actually spending $130 on electricity regularly, then we should be budgeting $130 because that reflects our consumption, our actual consumption. Cool. So, gentlemen, once we've got our um, all our all our expenses recorded and we're recording what's actually happening in our lives which will give us an insight into whether or not um, our budget is right or wrong, uh, we'll get a sense of how long it will take for us to achieve it, our financial goals. How long is it going to take us to save up to buy a new car? Are we on track to repay our, our mortgage by a certain date? You guys got a video here, um, yeah, I'll, I'll leave this at your discretion whether or not you want to watch this or you have time. Uh, I certainly find it, it helpful and, and Dave Ramsey's uh, certainly got some, some valuable insights into budgeting and he's a real straight shooter. So gentlemen, final slide here on budgeting. Uh, key thing here is that, look, 
budgets are not legal obligations. Uh, we can deviate from them um, to reflect sort of the unexpected things that, that happen in life. Um, but if that happens, we should be updating our financial goals. Um, got a nice big quote here from Phil Graham, the former US Senator. Balancing the budget is like going to heaven. Everyone wants the end result, but nobody wants to do what's necessary to get there. So the insight from this, guys, is that sticking to a budget is difficult because it requires that discipline uh, to forego uh, consumption of wants. So whether um, we go out to, to a restaurant uh, might actually, um, that decision might be made by our budget as opposed to what we might want to do at the time. So gentlemen, final sort of slide here on things to consider when saving. Security and risk. Uh, we're very lucky in New Zealand that our banks are very safe. They have very good um, credit ratings. And we, we mentioned Standard & Poor's and Fitch as commercial uh, rating agencies in class last week. So these ratings, and Moody's is another rating agency, um, have given our New Zealand banks very strong credit ratings. If you put your money in, the bank, in a New Zealand bank, it's highly unlikely that your money um, is not going to be returned to you because the banks are highly unlikely to fail in New Zealand. But it's possible. We must always bear in mind what are our goals. Is it a more short-term goal about meeting a, um, an, ex, uh, an expense or is it about buying an asset or is it a long-term goal about setting ourselves up? Uh, we should be constantly thinking about, about timelines um, so that we, we can be updating our, our expenditure and income um, if once we're meeting meeting our financial goals. Accessibility, yep, some, some deposits uh, essentially lock away your savings for periods of time. A five-year term deposit means that you cannot access your money for five years. When we say cannot, you are able to, but if you do, you will uh, forego some of the benefits um, of having your money in a term deposit. Like there are some effective fees from withdrawing um, savings from, from uh, term deposits. And the last point, rates of return. So New Zealand interest rates are incredibly low at the moment. Um, but we know that, hey, there are some things that we can do to increase our interest income, and it can be the likes of simply leaving it in the bank and generating compound interest. Okay, gentlemen, so with our final period, 